What's up game developers, Couch Ferret here, and today we'll continue our game with keyboard and mouse inputs to be able to play the game without a controller. We'll restructure the code to handle controller inputs together with mouse and keyboard inputs. If it sounds fun, then stay with me and consider subscribing with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos of this game. Cool, let's begin! Let's start with restructuring our code a bit, because it looks kind of messy and it is hard to extend it. Let's have a new function called process inputs, which will contain all the input handling. Then we need to make the movement and aim variables into global variables, so all functions can access them, not just the one that declared them. We need to remove the variables type when we give it a new value, so it's not making a new variable, just giving it a new value. Our goal is to make all input handling in this process inputs function, so we access the raw inputs only in one place. To do this, let's move these two lines into our new function. We need to call the process inputs in the update function, so our code works the same way as before. And don't forget to delete the other line in the aim and shoot function. We need to change the shooting direction variable as well, to use the aim variable instead of accessing the inputs directly. Now we are done with the sticks, only the fire button remains. Let's create an is aiming global bool to know if we are currently holding down the fire button or not. Let's give it a value and use it as well. The last thing we need is an end of aiming variable similar to is aiming. This will be only true when we release the fire button. Ok, now all input handling is in one function, so we can confidently extend it later. Let's clean up the update function a bit. Let's move all the animator scripts into a new function called animate. Then also move the line that changes the position of our archer into a move function. Cool, the update function looks so much simpler. First, it processes the inputs and stores it into variables, like the aim and movement vector, then it handles the crosshair and shooting, and after that, it animates and moves the archer. To be able to switch between controller and keyboard mouse inputs, we need to create a useController variable. Then we have to create an if statement in the process inputs function, so it changes how it's handling the inputs based on the useController variable. Let's move the existing code into it, and the else part of it will contain the keyboard and mouse handling. Let me quickly fix the aim and shoot function, so it doesn't change the aim variable. I need to move this multiplier so it doesn't change the aim's value, and also move the normalization into the process inputs function, where it belongs. Ok, now we can work on the keyboard inputs. Let's have a line which accesses the default horizontal and vertical inputs that are based on the arrow and WASD keys. If we hit play now, we can move around. Cool! This was easy, but the mouse movement is a bit trickier. We can easily press the joystick continuously to the right, but moving the mouse continuously to the right is tiresome. So I'm going to make a cursor-like crosshair, which cannot move too far from the player, so it won't give an advantage to players who play with the mouse. To do this, we need to store a current position of the cursor and add the mouse movement into it in every frame. Let's create a mouse movement variable, which represents the movement of the mouse within the current frame. We can access the mouse's movement by the default mouse X and mouse Y inputs. By default, the aim vector free variable is initialized with a 0, 0, 0 value, so it starts at the center of our player, which is perfect. We need to add the mouse movement into it, so it changes slightly based on which direction we move the mouse. By only normalizing it when its magnitude is greater than 1, we restrict the cursor, so it can't be more than 1 unit away from the player. If we had normalized it regardless of its magnitude, then it could only move around the player in the circumference of a unit circle, which wouldn't be the worst, but wouldn't be good either. Now, we only need to give values to the is aiming and end of aiming variables to have a functional mouse input handling. We can achieve this by using the default fire1 input, which is based on the left mouse button. Let's test it. It's working. However, it's a bit too sensitive. Let's go to the project settings, input, and decrease the sensitivity of both the mouse X and mouse Y to 0.01. That's better. 
Let's build the game so we can try it out in a full screen mode. We need to go to the file, build settings, and we have to click add open scene, so the current scene will be played. Let's hit build and run, and save it somewhere. It looks pretty nice. However, I found a very interesting, but game breaking bug. If we move the cursor to the edges of the screen and hold down the left mouse button, then we can't move the archer. I couldn't figure out exactly what is causing this issue, but we can just lock the cursor to the middle of the screen so it can't reach the edges of the screen. We can do that by changing the lock state of the cursor to locked. We put this into the awake function so it gets executed only once when the game initializes. See, it stays in the middle. We can even hide it as well, so it won't bother us. We need to set the cursor's visible parameter to false. Let's try it out in the editor. This is pretty neat. Because our cursor is logged, we need to press the escape key so it reappears and we can stop the game. There's only one thing left that I wanted to fix today. So the problem is that if we move diagonally with our character, then it moves almost one and a half time faster than when we move only in one direction. We need to do a similar thing that we did to the aim vector. We have to normalize it when it's bigger than one, so its maximum value will be always one. We can put this piece of code after the if statement because it is needed no matter what we are using to play the game. Now, the maximum diagonal speed is the same as the maximum horizontal speed. This also eliminates the differences between different controllers. For example, an Xbox 360's joystick moves in a circle shape, while the Xbox One's moves in a rounded rectangle. Without this little fix, we would have given a huge advantage to players who use Xbox One controllers. That's it for today, folks. Next time, we will start drawing our first map so our archer can have a world to live in. We will probably draw walls and a few small details to make our game a little more interesting. So be sure to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions about what you have just seen, feel free to ask and I try to answer all of them. See you next time!